Hi everyone, Tysol here. Um, this is a short video to go with my InDesign tutorial in Computer Arts 211, um, where we talk about using InDesign for texturing and creating texture backgrounds. Um, something that you would more than likely do in Photoshop because uh, you're basically going to have a lot more control over settings and uh, uh, certain effects. Um, but that's not to say you can't actually produce something of good quality in InDesign. Texturing basically falls into sort of two main camps and the first one being photo texturing where you just use a a found image and uh, you're going to want to look at using certain properties within the image to help texture your, your backgrounds um, and then there's the other side of, of texturing which is when you create something yourself you know, really engineer something that you're after. So we're going to look at both of those um, today. So let's just um, jump into InDesign and, and have a look at what we've got going on. Uh, basically, I'll, I've got everything set up as per the tutorial. So I'll just uh, break apart the bits that I've got already on page and uh, show you how they work and, and the process you go through to importing uh, images, textures. So, uh, this is my background that I have set up. All of this was done in Illustrator. Um, there's no reason you can't do it in InDesign, it's just that Illustrator's a lot easier when it comes to patterning and uh, laying out objects and repeating them and stuff like that. So, so this is the um, first level of texturing that I do, photo texturing. Um, let me unlock that layer, make sure everybody else is locked. Let's just have a look at exactly what we've got going on here. If I drag you over to this side. Um, you over to this side. We've got three photos. And there's this one here. Okay. If I actually copy that out, you can see how I usually like to start is um you know I'll put in a flat colour, give it a gradient as well. And that's mainly because as I import images to that binding box, I start to add um, the opacity effects, not to the binding box itself, but to the image that I've imported. You see how if I click here, I have the binding box selected, yet if I use the direct selection tool, you can see I've actually just selected that image within the frame. Um, I like to do that mainly because so I, doubt I know that the, the binding box is always set to normal and that the effects that I'm applying to the photo are to the photo themselves. Um, so yeah, as I say, that, that gradient's in the background there just because I know that when I bring this image in I'm going to tint it down and um, allow some of the the gradient in the background to come through so it starts to create a highlight so you do to get a sense of like a form and, and, and light going across the surface. Okay so let's have a look at uh, what's happening in terms of opacity effects in InDesign. So that first texture selected if I press command shift and F10 it opens up the effects window just drag that out and you can see that it's set to multiply at 50% and that's allowing that background gradient just towards about to come through. And still, yeah, we're still seeing enough of the photo texture itself. The uh, following one is this texture here. That's set to lighten at 100%. That's mainly because I want to um, want to capture all of these nice highlight scratches that are going on in the photo texture. But I don't really want the, 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 the darker areas and the depth, so I'll just grab that and uh, 
send you back over to where you came from. Yep, you can see up there and around the edges. You know, some of the scratches have stayed through. And then the last texture is over here and select the photo itself, not the frame. And you can see that that's set to hard light at 100%. And uh, this one, I really added this one just to give me some uh, color saturation. Print preview on should give you a sense of how it uh, final image looks. It's a nice little tip is Shift W to go into preview. But yep, as you can see, it's a really nice kind of soft, subtle. There's areas of interest. There's areas of color interest as well. But we're still seeing this pattern come through and in some areas it, you know, it's reversed out and then it becomes positive. So that's effectively that's the that's the texture inside. I did add another texture on top of here which is just a bit more scratch as well. Um, in fact let's just have a look and see what properties we had in that one. Overlay at seventy percent. Let's uh, see what the source file actually looks like. Okay, so it's another uh, film plate, textured film plate. Okay, so that's pretty much that covered. That's all there really is to photo texturing. Uh, create a binding box, Apple D to place your, or Command D to place your image, um, and then jump into this effects window. And you know, a lot of it is experimentation. You know, as long as you know that certain capacity settings are additive and others are subtractive that once you get your head around that you'll know straight away if you look at a photo and go right I, I just want the highlights here I just want the hot areas uh, you're going to want to have something that's subtractive like screen or um, you know hard light okay the next thing I want to talk about is um, object texturing and if I just uh, open up my layers palette and uh, introduce some design elements to go over this background. Uh, text off and then U off. There we go. And unlock that. Uh, something InDesign really does uh, miss is having a overlay, pattern overlay creator, which we're all familiar with um, from Photoshop. Um, but obviously you can get around that by creating your textures and then importing them to objects in InDesign as I've done here. So let me just break apart this interface style that I've got. And uh, this is actually got two sets of textures going on. The uh, underlying texture is here. And that's actually uh, a Photoshop file. It's very subtle. Let's see if I can get in tighter. And uh, put on Overprint Preview to give it a bit more detail. Okay, there you can see it. Um, wait for InDesign to catch up. Come on, InDesign. So it's uh, a surface texture that's. Uh, 
little uh, nodules to give it a, a kind of like a, a rubbery or plastic -y kind of feel like it's got a, a surface, a tactile surface to it. Um, I'm a firm believer that um, you know, in, in making elements like this uh, feel tactile, especially when you're creating UIs and interfaces and buttons that should be touched um, for um, touch devices, you know, mobile devices, iPads, etc. Um, let's have a look at that pattern. That pattern is actually a Photoshop pattern. And it is, where are you? There you go. Okay, so you can see that that's uh, it's got a pattern fill here. That's giving it that dot like texture. Um, in fact, there's another pattern underneath that, which is um, you know, just like a, a kind of rippled textured surface going on there. And again it's the same process as importing a photo, import that in. That's actually set to soft light at 100%. Uh, rather annoyingly that drop shadow shouldn't be on. It's the default when you open up this effects window. You can see it's got an inner shadow to it uh, using global light 90%. The offsets are set to zero. I think the bevel and boss is quite quite low as well. You try and uh, not to stick to the uh, presets when you're picking these effects. So I always drop down the opacity for the um, the highlight and the shadow and play with them. Um, to get the the right look and the right feel, um, and if I just close that down, so yeah, that's the that's the first set. Let's have a look at this last texture group. I'll just move that back over there. Just stick over print preview on again. This is diagonal lines, and you can see how they uh, a gradient, how they sort of feather off, disappear around the edges here. And that's because if you, you know, if you're trying to describe a, a surface texture of an object, you're more than likely going to the eye is going to visually pick up on the actual texture itself at a point where the lighting on the surface is in um, transition, you know, from from darker to a, to a highlight, or um, right on the highlight somewhere like that. So that's kind of what I'm mimicking here. Is uh, is getting that texture to to behave in the uh, similar sort of way. It's uh, been imported into that shape. The, these this second set of shapes is, um, like I say, a duplicate of the shapes underneath um, with their texture deleted out and then the colours removed um, and the backgrounds turned to none and then this this diagonal texture is imported in set to multiply at 60% um, I can actually show you that texture Photoshop there you go Pretty simple. Again, using a um, pattern fill in uh, Photoshop. Scaled down quite tight. It's always worth um, looking at the library that uh, Photoshop has when it comes to these textures. Not many people explore them, but there's quite a lot in there, and also you can find quite a few um, pattern packs online. Uh, in terms of creating the 
gradient I just select I've actually got the texture itself selected there I've applied settings to that, effect settings to that go away there's a directional feather again angle at 90% coming in from all edges and pulled it in about 250 pixels and then there's a gradient feather as well on radial it's getting it coming from the center outwards and uh, you know I tend to just eyeball the gradient stops just to get it working in a way that um, you, know, you think is, is right looks nice And that's pretty much that group. There is uh, a third texture going on. If I just turn that off, unlock you, make that out. Again, you know, this this whole texturing process is all about building things up in quite a subtle way. Texturing going on in this type here, just to give it uh, a bit of surface detail. Yeah, that shape I wanted it to have kind of like a uh, a glass feel that's smudged a bit and catching the light. Um, the idea being that if I zoom out, that these three shapes would uh, you'd be able to touch on them and move them round anti-clockwise, clockwise as they pass underneath the window this text is revealed so you go, that's texturing in uh, InDesign um, from photo texturing, object texturing the um, similar processes but it's all about experimenting really and having a look and familiarising yourself with how these effects work and uh, experimenting, seeing how they work together and when it comes to object texturing being able to understand exactly what it is you're, you're, you're trying to achieve the, the look you're trying to generate and uh, InDesign can allow you to get there so I hope you found this short video useful this is Paul signing off, thanks for watching